Hello and welcome to another video. This one is about Git and my recommendation that you should not clone over HTTPS. Uh, anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so if you're on GitHub or you know other Git uh, repositories that or <laughs> hosting sites, uh, it often will present to you a way to clone, and by default, it'll give you HTTPS. And if we clone that, it will work. Uh, I actually recommend leaving off the .git on the end because it's easier to remember and you don't need it. Uh, but if you go to make a change here, let's say we make a WAT branch and let's just say that we add hello, hello world to the readme and hello, hello world. Uh, let's say we make a change here and we go to push that. It's going to prompt us for a username and a password. And uh, this is not great. It's, uh, you know, training you to type your username and password into random things, which is probably not the best idea. But also, I mean, it's just kind of annoying. You have to do this over and over. Uh, what I recommend instead is to clone over SSH. So if we go here and instead click SSH and clone from that, uh, you'll also notice there's .git on the end. You also don't need this. Uh, the URL structure is a little bit different. Uh, it starts with git at. This is actually a username for SSH. Uh, conventionally, Git repos use this user for cloning. Then it's a host name. Then instead of a slash, it's a colon. This is something to remember, I guess. It's a little bit annoying. Um, and if you don't have SSH set up, such as uh, what I have right now, it will give you permission denied public key. And so the first thing that you'll want to do is set up an SSH key. Now, fortunately, GitHub has nice little directions for these for generating them. I'm going to run through those right now and give you my recommendations as they go. Uh, yeah, so we're going to start here. It specifically is giving me directions for Windows because uh, my host machine's on Windows, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to run this SSH key gen command. Uh, note here that it's using ED25519. This is a elliptical curve SSH key, which is kind of the more modern keys. If you're dealing with old systems, you'll want to use RSA, and you'll want to make sure that you have enough bits in your RSA key. So this is uh, 4096, which is a decently sized RSA, RSA key. Um, if you can get away with it, use the elliptic curve stuff. It's nicer and, and works better. All right, so we're going to do this. Uh, it recommends to use your email address here. You can use it if you want to. However, it will be publicly available. You can instead use the placeholder GitHub email address that they give you. I'll link a, description, a video in the description about that. Uh, but I'm going to use my actual email address. All right, so we're going to run this command. Uh, it will prompt you where to store this. I would recommend just using the defaults here. If you need to generate more of them, you would use a different value there. Uh, I recommend using a passphrase for your SSH key. Uh, you can either generate this with your password manager or, you know, use one of those correct horse battery staple style ones. Uh, I'm going to use bad password for this because you can see my keyboard. Bad password. And it will prompt you for the password again. Bad password. And then it'll print out some random art at the end. Okay, cool. It'll also print your fingerprint. Don't worry about all this. This is mostly just, I don't know, it looks cool. Now, this has generated two files for you. You can find them in the SSH directory. Uh, you'll see that there is the ID ED25519 and the .pub file. This is your private key. Do not share it with people. This is your public key. It's generally shareable and should be you know, well, well known wherever, uh, wherever you place this. Uh, in order to hook this up to GitHub, you will actually need to give GitHub your public key. Again, public key, not private key. Don't give away your privates. So if we count that file, id.pub, you'll see that it's this you know, hexadecimal-ish, well, base64-ish string. It's not quite because it's got a slash in it. Uh, but again, it has your email address in here. So if you're not comfortable sharing that, use a placeholder one. Uh, you're going to copy this, and then we're going to go to GitHub. And we're going to go to the Settings tab. And under the Settings tab, there will be SSH and GPG keys. This is where you'll add your key. I have an old RSA key that's living here. Uh, but we're going to add a brand new one. And I'm going to call this VM2 uh, SSH key, something like that. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, this is just because I'm using a virtual machine. If it's your first one, I would just call it primary. doesn't really matter what it is. You don't have to change this authentication key thing unless you're doing SSH signing. But of course, we're not doing that today. Uh, then you click Add SSH key. It's going to prompt you for your security settings. I have, um, in a way, 
a, um, what is it called? A YubiKey set up so that I have to do that. And you're, you're basically ready to go now. So the next thing that you wanna do is you are going to add this key to your SSH agent. Uh, if you're on Linux, usually you can just do ssh-add and it'll just do it for you. Uh, it will prompt you for your password the first time. And sometimes it'll prompt you after that, but um, I recommend you know keeping in your SSH agent. And now we can go to clone that repo again, get clone, get at, because that's the username, github.com colon, it's, it's weird and different, hastily slash ast pretty. And it will clone that, you know, it'll use the ECDSA key. And now if you make a branch, you'll be able to just push automatically without having to type in your GitHub username and password or uh, GitHub token or any of the other things. So let's just do the same uh, change again. Hello, hello world. Hello world. And now when we push, it'll just automatically use our SSH key and we won't have to do any special password prompting or whatever. Uh, but anyway, that's my recommendation and kind of a quick little intro to getting set up with SSH keys and how you can configure them for GitHub. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.